Hey y'all, this is TT, and I am going to cook a good old meatloaf. I'm cooking this for my parents. Um, and I'm taking over there uh, tomorrow for them. So they can have it for dinner for the next couple of days. My mom requested a, a meatloaf. So I decided that I would go ahead and uh, do a, a video. I am, I have a little bit of olive oil in the pan and I have my um, heat on like a medium high to get the oil a little bit high. I'm gonna add a, just a tad bit of butter. Okay, and I'm doing this, I'm going to saute up my onions and my bell peppers. Now, I don't really like to put raw onion and bell pepper in my meatloaves. Um, I, I, don't, I really don't like that. What I do is I saute them up. So we're gonna get this here. Good and uh, hot. I hope y'all are doing good today. Hope y'all had a great day. Hope it's going good. It's a little chilly here in uh, Clearwater, Florida, about 30 minutes away from Tampa. Well, really about 15 minutes. So I did about a half of an onion. And this is the sweet um, yellow onion. I don't too much do white onion. It's um, too strong of a flavor for me. I like the sweet onion. And this is about half of a red bell pepper uh, now. I did not choose a red bell pepper. The bell pepper started off green. <laughs> I bought the bell pepper from Aldi. And uh, I used a couple out the pack. And this one sat until it was red. So I just used it. And this is what I'm putting in the meatball. Okay, so we're going to let this saute up. Um, I do season my uh, onions and bell pepper. I just put a little salt. I usually have some herbs de Provence or some Italian seasoning, but I'm out of Italian seasoning. I got to go and restock. So, good lord. Look at it, I'm just making a mess. Italian seasoning is basically just oregano, some marjoram, some basil, some sage, a little parsley. That is in your Italian seasoning. Oh, and thyme. So I am just um, gonna use a, a couple of those components. I do have some um, oregano here that I just dumped all over my stove. And uh, I got some dried basil. I'm gonna put some of that in there. And it smells wonderful. And that's all I'm gonna put on it. Um, okay, we're just gonna let that cook down a little bit. And right here in my bowl, which I wasted oregano in there. I'm gonna rinse it out. I have some ground beef that I thawed out. And we're just gonna put that in here. Now this is for my 
transparent, so um, it's not like it's a gonna be a super huge meatloaf. It's gonna be a good size. get nice and translucent now I'm just gonna start putting some seasonings in here with this meat okay since it's open I'm gonna go ahead and throw some of this oregano now if you notice I'm crushing it with the uh, mixing the reg oregano <laughs> in order to release uh, the flavors and stuff the aromatics you need to kind of crush it with your fingers gonna do some more basil in here. Uh, I'm gonna put some some cumin or cumin, whichever one how you say it, in here. I don't do a lot of measuring, guys. I'm so sorry, but uh, depends on. This is garlic garlic powder. That's the cumin. Um, this is oregano, but I used the other one. Um, I'm gonna put some onion powder in here. Even though I'm putting onions in there, I do put onion powder in there as well. This is the dried basil. And we're, of course, gonna put some pepper. missing something no I'm not oh we got some parsley I'm gonna put some parsley in here too I don't really use the shaker I would say this is about probably like a pound maybe and a half of ground beef so if you're using a pound and a half, I would say probably about a half a teaspoon of cumin, half a, tea, half a teaspoon of basil, um, about a teaspoon of the dried oregano, um, about a teaspoon of parsley flakes, about a quarter to the, a half a teaspoon of black pepper, and then I'd use like a couple of dashes of my secret ingredient, which is cinnamon. And a little paprika, just a little bit. And I'm also going to put, because I don't have any ketchup, I really don't use a lot of ketchup anymore. Um, not really. Um, since I've gone um, keto, I don't use a lot of ketchup. So what I do a lot of times is I use this tomato bouillon um, and put in my food that I want to have a little bit of tomato flavor. I think I put about a tablespoon of that in there. Okay, now I do use this and onion seed mix. This is a whole package. I put that right on in the bowl. And I use a little bit of ranch 
just a little bit of ranch seasoning. Probably like a teaspoon of it. Okay, now uh, for salt. Now uh, I'm gonna say, cause see the Lipton soup, ooh, Lord, the Lipton onion soup mix has quite a bit of salt in there. So I put about maybe that much salt, if that. So I didn't use all of it. Cause it's already the, the Lipton onion soup mix and the ranch has quite a bit of salt in it. I am using, oh, let me get a spatula. And I am putting some sofrito in here. Cause remember I said I don't use ketchup. So I'm putting some sofrito in here, which is just a tomato cooking base. It has your green peppers, your onions, your garlic, olive oil, your tomato, basil, those type of seasonings in here. So it's like a tomato base. So instead of ketchup, that's what I'm gonna be using. And I'd say I probably put maybe about three tablespoons, three or four tablespoons in there. And we'll see how my meat consistency is. Uh, I might put add something else in there too. We'll see. This is panko. Now, usually, I will use the bread crumbs with the Italian seasoning, but I don't have any. Um, and like I said, I'm keto, so I don't really buy bread crumbs like that. Uh, this is for my parents, so I'm gonna put this panko in here. It's uh, plain. It's not seasoned. Thus, the, all the seasoning that I'm putting in here. So you probably put about a fourth of a cup of breadcrumbs in there. And we're going to add one egg. One egg. To our mixture. Watch out that you don't get any eggshells in here. My egg, and I hate egg to be on my hand. All right, so now We're going to add our vegetables on in here. I'm going to mix that in. Put that in the thing. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and mix all this up. Use your hands if you want. I really don't like to use my hands. <clears throat> but it, it won't hurt. I mean, you know, wash them. Or you can put on some gloves or whatever. It's up to you. We are just working everything incorporating everything into this uh, ground beef. It can get messy. I ain't gonna lie. Now, <clears throat> at this point, you're seasoning to taste, okay? So, what you're going to do, you're going to take some of your ground beef, 
and you're going to smell it to see how it smells. <clears throat> Do you like the way it's smelling? Is it smelling fragrant? Is it smelling like it's seasoned uh, all the way through? What do you think? If you think you can stand some more or something more, or if you don't think it's wet enough for your liking, if you don't, if you, you know, want some more seasoning added in there, by all means, add it in. I'm going to put just a little bit more um, liquid in here. Just a little bit. It's a little on the dry side for me. <laughs> Just a little bit. So I'm going to use some salsa. To get this to the consistency. Now you can you can use ketchup. Oh, I've used barbecue sauce before. You use what you like. But like I said, I'm doing a keto lifestyle and, and I don't have a lot of that type of stuff on hand. Um, I used to have some sugar-free barbecue sauce, but that's all gone. I got to go grocery shopping, y'all. So I can have it. Alright, so you're going to preheat your oven to about 375. Get it nice and hot. And we're going to put our meatloaf in there. We're going to put it in the pan. At this point, uh, even though I haven't been, um, you know, touching on, you know, putting my hand in there, I, I am going to have to use my hands in order to shape this into a loaf. So, I'm going to dump it in, get all the onions and bell pepper and stuff out of there. Put this bowl to the side. I think. I think I'm gonna put a little bit more pan cup. I have to use my hands to incorporate it, but it's okay. You have to get it to the consistency. I was just touching it and it just felt too wet. So, I'm going to put some more pan cut in there. Get it all the way through. Give it a loaf effect. And there you go. Beautiful meatloaf. Oh, yes. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, I'll wash your hands. All right. 
and we're gonna put this on in the oven and we let this cook for about 50 minutes y'all all right gonna let that cook like I said that's uh, 375 and it's gonna cook on down for about um, 45 to 50 minutes it's not a big meat low so that should be uh, all it needs to cook and once it is finished cooking I am gonna come back and show you how it looks I'm not gonna slice it up now because you know I did say this was for my mom, my parents. So you know <laughs> I don't want to slice it up, but I will show you how the meatloaf looks when it comes out the oven. Uh, you will see it's gonna look beautiful, and um, you know I had my parents come on here and, and um, tell you how it tastes. <laughs> Uh, high taste yes so yeah that is my good old fashioned southern meatloaf dish and um, you know you can serve that with mashed potatoes you can make some good gravy to go on it or you can make a nice um, tomato based sauce to go on top of your meatloaf um, usually you, you, you use some uh, tomato uh, you use some ketchup, some brown sugar, um, you know, put your little onion powder, some garlic powder in there, um, maybe a little bit of balsamic vinegar, and um, stir that up. Maybe add like a dab of mustard, maybe just a little bit. Stir that up, <clears throat> and you would pour that over the top of your meatloaf. Or you can use the drippings from the meatloaf to make a nice brown gravy. You know, you just do your roux, you get you some um, some oil or some butter, and you use equal parts butter and flour to make your roux brown it up real nice and brown. Um, and then uh, pour your drippings on top of that, maybe a little bit of water, and you might need to add maybe a little salt and pepper, maybe just a little bit, because the drippings from the, the meatloaf are going to be very flavorful and uh, make your gravy and have you some mashed potatoes or some good old rice some green beans some some uh, some either some collard greens or some kale you could even do some green beans with that and um you know a nice dinner roll or you can do you some cornbread if you're gonna do the kale or the collard greens and there you go that's dinner and that's dinner for a few days if you make a nice big meal of depending on how many people you got in the family and depending on how greedy everybody is. <laughs> mm -hmm. So yeah, we're gonna let that cook for about 45 minutes and once it finishes, I will let you see that finished results, okay? All right.